Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here, and welcome back to the Houdini for MoGraph series. We'll be setting up this fish animation, which is fun because we used vellum and zero keyframes. Um, I thought it was uh, cool to see just completely procedural character type of animation. So let's just get into this one. But before we get into that, just a quick shameless self-promotion. I recently opened up a shop on my personal site selling art prints. These were all made using Houdini, so check them out and grab one if you want to support these tutorials. Thanks. We'll start with the body. So make a line, changing the direction to 1 in the X and 0 in the Y, and then turn up the points to 30. Next, make a UV texture node set to rows and columns and the class to points. And now we're going to get just a base movement. So drop a transform and type sign open parentheses dollar $f times 10, close those parentheses, and times 0.15 in the Z. And this is going to give us some back and forth motion. And just to have a little bit of variety going up and down, I'm going to copy and paste that into the Y. But I'm going to change the 10 to 5 and the 0.15 to just 0.02. And that's good. Now, one thing for the sim, we wanted to start at the origin, mostly for creating the tail, which we're going to get to later. So to do this, um, I'm going to do a blend shape and wire in the geo from before the transform as the second input. And then in the blend, I'm going to type fit, open parentheses, dollar $f, comma, 1001, comma, 1011, comma, 1, comma, 0, and close those parentheses. And this will just blend it smoothly over the first 10 frames to, to, before it starts animating. Next, I'm going to make a group node and name it pin and change the type to points and type zero as the base group. And this will make sure our front of the body stays in place. And now we're going to make a vellum constraints node and a vellum solver node. For the constraints, we'll make the type string, scroll down and select that pin group in the pin points and make sure to check on match animation. And now if you hit play, you see it just kind of falls. And so in the solver forces, I'm going to first change the gravity to zero and then add two in the X wind. Now I think it's a little too wiggly for what I want. So in the constraint, I'm going to change this tangent drag to two. And that feels better to me. Um, but feel free to mess around with these constraint settings to get different looks. Perhaps you're doing a longer, more snake-like type of fish, whatever it is you need. Um, it'll, you'll be adjusting, say, this drag or potentially the bend stiffness. And now I'm going to skin this. So drop a poly wire node. And we want to change the shape along the curve. So before this, I'm going to add a point pop and dive inside. In here, I'm going to do a vector to float on the UV that we set up and attach a ramp to the X and I'm going to change the type to spline and then I'm going to do a multiply after that and middle mouse on the input and do attribute promote so that the multiplier is on the outside and I'm going to do bind export and a type in P scale. Now in the polywire radius, I'm going to also type at P scale and I'm going to also change the divisions to point or to eight. And now I'm going to mess with the ramp and the multiply, which I'm going to set around 0.2 and just change the ramp so that we have a nice curve along our fish body. I use the B spline type instead of just a linear spline. And there's our body. In the project files, I did this a bit differently. Um, if you want to dive in there, it just is a method that gets you cleaner UVs than this, but this way is just a little faster. So now we're going to do the tail of our fish. So go to frame one and do a separate strand from the sim and make a polyframe node. 
Now uncheck the normal and check the tangent name and actually name it capital N so that each point normal is facing the one before it. Now make an attribute create and name it up with a size of three. And you're just gonna set it to zero, one, zero so that it's always facing upwards. Now I'm gonna make a carve node with the first at a value of 0.82. And then lastly for this, I'm gonna do a peak node set to points and I'm gonna just manually select the end point and I'm gonna do a distance of about 0.25. And this is how we're going to shape the tail. So I'm just gonna make a resample node and uncheck the max segment lengths and check on max segments. And I'm gonna set it to 24. This will make sure that we have the same amount of points throughout. Now I'll copy the UV texture node that we had up at the first line and I'm gonna bring it down. And I'm also gonna grab the point VOP that we used to set up the P scale on the body. And I'm just gonna make a new line node moving the origin to minus 0.5 so that it sits right in the middle. And I'm gonna change the points to three and then I'm gonna do a copy to points, hooking those up. And now after that, I'm gonna do a skin node. And you can now use the point VOP to just adjust the shape of the tail. Mess around until you find something you like. You can get something a little more curvy whatever it is, and once you're happy with it, make a time shift, deleting the expression and just typing 1001 so that you freeze on the first frame. And then I'm gonna make a remesh with a size of 0.035. And I'm gonna bring up the smoothing for the edges. And this is just so that we have more evenly spaced, nice clean uh, geometry for the cloth sim, which we're gonna get into. But first make a group named pin again, also changing it to points. And this time we'll enable the bounding region so that we have a bounding box. And we're just going to shape it a bit so that we have a tiny bit of the tail end that just stays stiff with the body. Now we're gonna make a point to form and attach the second input to the frame hold we above and then the third to the node above that so that we have the cloth now deforming. And now it's time for the actual simulation. For this, it took a lot of fidgeting with stiffness and wind to get the right values. So I'm just gonna give you my values, but I encourage you to mess around with them on your own so that you understand what each one is actually doing. So again, make a vellum constraints and a vellum solver. Now change the constraints to cloth and select the pin group, checking on matched animation. And in the solver forces, I'm gonna change the gravity to zero again and the wind to 1.4 in the X. Also adjusting this wind drag to be 0.4. Now hit play, and you can see we have a fishtail. Now for me, it loses too much of the initial shape. Um, so how I'm gonna counter this is in the constraints. The way I found worked was I changed the tangent drag all the way up almost to 10. And then the stretch dampening ratio became 0.01. And the bend stiffness became 5, with the dampening here being 0.1. Now just do a vellum post process with the spatial blur cranked. And check on extrude by thickness to make it not perfectly flat anymore. Drop a merge node with the body. And now the last thing I did is just if you drop a time shift and type $F plus 100 so that we skip those beginning frames where it's moving from the origin into its animation, you hit play. And there you have our zero keyframe vellum fish wiggle.
You can download the original project files on the site if you want to dive further into this one. As always, would love to hear from you in the comments if there's any effects you'd like to see tutorials for in the future. Hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time. <laughs>